Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about my favourite nutrient. It is one that tends to fly under the radar a little bit because most of us when we try to organise our diets and make sure we're getting the right nutrients, we focus on things like protein, iron, calcium, making sure we have enough water and not too many carbohydrates. And there is a lot to balance and think about. But the nutrient that I am focusing on today is magnesium. In all fairness, magnesium has come into the forefront in recent years and more people do tend to know about it and that it's something we need, but not enough because about 75% of Americans are not getting the recommended daily intake of magnesium through their diet. And here in Australia, it's honestly not that much better. The thing is, if you have a well-balanced diet, there's a low chance that you will be lacking magnesium, but the typical Western diet is far from well-balanced, so I think that many people, myself included, need to pay more attention to magnesium. It is so important for so many things that happen in your body, so today I will be giving you everything you need to know what magnesium is why you need it how much you need and where to find it so let's get into it as we now know, are split into two main categories, the macronutrients, which is protein, fats, and carbohydrates, and then the micronutrients, which include vitamins and minerals. Now, magnesium is a very important micronutrient. It's not a vitamin, it is in fact a mineral. And it's an essential nutrient, meaning your body cannot produce it. So it needs to come in through your diet, and that's why it's really easy to become deficient, because if your diet isn't well balanced, you screw it up. So what's the big deal? What is magnesium actually needed for in our bodies? Well, it's involved in over 300 chemical reactions in the body. And these reactions include processes to do with energy production, muscle function, nerve function, making DNA, and also controlling blood pressure, just to name a few. So I'm not going to be able to go through every single thing today, but let's just go through the main things. Now, magnesium is needed for energy production, which means we once again get to talk about my old friend ATP. I feel like I mention this in every video, but a few of the enzymes that are needed to make ATP actually require magnesium to do their job. So when you eat food, the nutrients in the food don't just magically turn into energy. These nutrients, like carbohydrates for example, will go through many reactions to end up becoming ATP and magnesium will assist in these reactions so if you don't have enough magnesium this won't be as efficient and not only does it help make ATP it also helps transport ATP around your body so magnesium will be helpful in situations where you need energy in a certain part of your body so for example say you're attempting a heavy bench press you're going to need a burst of ATP in your chest muscles. So magnesium can help make sure that it all goes smoothly. Now, am I saying magnesium is the key to achieving PBs in the gym? Perhaps. This actually leads me to my next point because magnesium is in fact very important for muscle function. Now, of course, a large part of that is because if you have enough magnesium, then you can efficiently make ATP and muscles need a lot of ATP, but, Magnesium also helps with muscle contraction. It does this by making sure you have the right amount of calcium inside muscle cells. Now, calcium is an essential nutrient for muscle contraction. If you want your muscles to contract and do their job, you need calcium. Now, magnesium in this case blocks calcium channels inside muscle cells. This means that you will not get an excessive burst of calcium into the cells, which is good because your muscles will be able to relax again. If you had high calcium levels in your muscles all the time, then they would just continue contracting, and this would lead to issues like cramping and fatigue. So magnesium makes sure it's all balanced and helps a lot when it comes to muscle recovery. Now, subscribe because I will be doing a video all about magnesium and muscle recovery very soon. Magnesium is also important for bone health. It's essential for the proper absorption of calcium into your body. Now, if you remember the video I did on calcium, you will remember that calcium is the main player in bone health, and in order to get absorbed properly, you need the active form of vitamin D. Now, magnesium helps convert vitamin D into its active form and makes sure that you can absorb calcium from the food that you eat. You can see that when it comes to nutrition, 
all of the nutrients tend to work together. It's why you need a variety of food when you eat. But anyway, magnesium is also a part of the bone matrix itself. So inside of your bones, you have the matrix, which is full of proteins and minerals. In fact, half of the magnesium that's found inside your body is actually contained inside the bones. Magnesium helps to form this matrix and make sure bones maintain their density and strength. The more dense your bones are, the stronger they are. Now, the last thing that I will touch on is heart health, because we all know that heart disease is the number one cause of death in the world. And magnesium can help regulate your blood pressure because it can relax blood vessels. Now, remember I said that it prevents calcium building up in cells so that muscles can relax. Well, that same thing helps to make blood vessels relax because there are muscle cells in your blood vessels too. Now, this helps keep blood vessels healthy and prevents high blood pressure. Since magnesium helps with energy production, it also makes sure that your heart has plenty of ATP to use when needed, making sure that everything runs smoothly. Now, there's much more that magnesium is involved in, but I will just include some honorable mentions for now. So some other things that magnesium is good for is regulating insulin levels, which helps control blood sugar levels. It's also involved in the making of proteins, it's anti-inflammatory, and also helps support your immune system. I am gonna have to do a second video to explain all of this because I don't think everyone has the attention span for such a long video right now. Instead, I want to move on to what might happen to you if your magnesium levels are low and what symptoms you might feel if you happen to have a deficiency. So if you know what magnesium is needed for, then you can almost guess what happens when you don't get enough. Because it's needed for muscle function, then a very common symptom of a deficiency is actually muscle cramps and spasms. Alongside this, you can also experience weakness and fatigue because of the fact that magnesium is important when it comes to making ATP. Now, high blood pressure is also something that someone may experience, but there are a lot of reasons why blood pressure can increase. So it's rare that you can pinpoint that down to just a magnesium deficiency. But if you have high blood pressure, just have a think and see if a lack of magnesium might be making that worse. Now, a few other symptoms of deficiency include eye twitching, nausea, loss of appetite, tingling, and numbness, and it can affect mental health and contribute to anxiety and depression. Now, again, all of these symptoms are things that can be caused by a number of issues, not just a magnesium deficiency. And to be honest, most of the more severe symptoms only happen in a very severe deficiency. But if you make sure you are getting enough magnesium, then you can at least rule that out and potentially ease some of these symptoms like low energy levels, if that is something that you are experiencing. Now there's never a single solution to everything. It's a balancing act, unfortunately, but take it one step at a time. So how much magnesium do you actually need? Well, Australian guidelines state that for men 19 to 30 years old, the recommended intake is 400 milligrams of magnesium per day. Now for men 30 and over, this increases ever so slightly to 420 milligrams per day. For women, recommendations are a little lower. 19 to 30 year olds need about 310 milligrams per day. And for women 30 and over, this increases again to 320 milligrams per day. Now, the reason you want a little more once you get over 30 is because of the heart, bone, and muscle benefits. Because as you age, it becomes more and more important to keep these things healthy. Now, yes, these are Australian guidelines, but these numbers seem to be a general consensus regardless of where you are looking. So where can you find magnesium? It's actually in quite a variety of food, both plant and animal based, which is why if you tend to have a well-balanced diet that contains foods from all of the different food groups, then you will usually be safe and not have any issues with a lack of magnesium. Now, here is a list of some common sources of magnesium, as well as the amount that you can get per serve. You can see that we can find a good amount of it in nuts and seeds like almonds and cashews. It's also found in leafy green vegetables like spinach. Fish is a good source and so are dairy products and meat to some extent. Now, just pause and take a look at the list to get some ideas of what you may be able to add to your diet if you need to. I'm also going to link in the description a good source that actually lets you search up different foods and it tells you the amount of magnesium 
per 100 grams of whatever food you've picked is really useful. Now, as always, if you can't quite get what you need from food sources, there are supplements available to help give you a boost and it's not different with magnesium. You can find tablets, capsules, and even powders. Powders tend to work best because your body doesn't have to work as hard to absorb everything. There are plenty of magnesium supplements around. Sometimes I do think there are too many choices though. The actual form that the magnesium comes in is quite important to get right. But just as a tip, look at the amount of total elemental magnesium that you get per serve when trying to see how much magnesium these supplements contain. I will be doing a video explaining more in depth all the different supplement types. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one. But one thing I do want to talk about with supplements is the upper level of intake for magnesium. This is the highest amount of magnesium that you can take per day that is considered safe. This is because magnesium can cause some unpleasant side effects if you have too much. So the upper limit for adults is about 350 milligrams per day. And I'm talking about supplements specifically here because side effects from taking too much magnesium from food sources are not as common. If you are taking magnesium supplements, diarrhea is a very common side effect and tends to come on as you go past this 350 milligram dosage. Now in some people, it can come with less, speaking from experience. And that's pretty much all I have to say for now. Magnesium is a huge nutrient. There is just so much to talk about. And hopefully by now you have an idea on why I think it's so important. Keep an eye out for future videos on this topic because like I said, there's heaps to say. Now, if you enjoyed this video or learned something, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next week. And until then, keep playing the long game.